Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on your evening. Uh, my name is Sia Paneshi. Uh, I'm a curator here with Mokta, and I am joined by Chiara Bredotti, who is also a Hi. curator with Mokta. Um, Hi, everyone. We are the curators of the Not Only RGB exhibition, uh, which has opened in Decentraland and will be open until the end of January in 2023. Um, and today we have a uh, Kevin Abosh joining us for an artist talk. So welcome, Kevin. Uh, thank you, thank you for having me. <laughs> Very happy to have Hi, you. Um, as a little bit of an introduction for you, Kevin, although you need no introduction, um, Kevin Abosh is an Irish conceptual artist who works in, across traditional mediums as well as with generative methods, including machine learning and blockchain technology. Um, his work addresses the nature of identity and value by posing ontological questions and responding to sociological dilemmas. So um, your work has been exhibited throughout the world, including the Hermitage Museum, the National Museum of China, and the Bogota Museum of Modern Art. Yeah, and tonight we are actually focusing on some signals, um, uh, 12 of uh, the works from this series of yours um, mm -hmm. are exhibited in um, not only RGB in the central land, and uh, it's worth mentioning that the um, exhibition has been uh, supported by the Decentraland uh, University and the Decentraland DAO. So um, we're here tonight to talk about uh, Sun Signals, which is a series of 1,010 uh, artworks uh, informed by the analysis of sun cycles and solar radiation on Earth. So utilizing um, your scientific background as the basis of uh, your artistic investigation. Uh, you examined solar data points, deploying deep learning algorithms and abstracting this data into elements like color, line, size and shape. And we're going to talk about that. Um, so the, the resulting sunscapes distill emotional value from scientific data into impact, impactful and technologically complex works. Um, each of the sun signals um, has been generated with renewable energy uh, using Kevin's solar powered computer servers. And as both a celebration of the diverse experience of the sun throughout our globe and also a commentary on the varied effects of climate change, sun signals captures the hope, curiosity and awe generated by the star responsible for life on our planet. Um, that's just a brief introduction. Kevin, I don't know if you would like to add something to what we shared just now. Um, well, it's, it's fun to, uh, it's fun to look, take a look at these, uh, these works uh, today, because, you know, you, when you, I think it, it just, as you're talking about it, 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 uh, it brought me sort of back to when uh, my life was all about this body of work, um, which is only, I don't know, maybe a year ago, <laughs> but so much has happened uh, since then, and um, uh, it's 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 kind of very satisfying to uh, to, to to look at them. There, I I don't know if uh, if other artists have this type of relationship with their work, but uh, I mean, it sounds saccharine, but they're all they're all sort of like little children, and uh, and then and then you work on other things or you're it's i don't know what it's akin to it's almost like uh, i have another family too i in fact I have a few families <laughs> and then and then i come back and i'm like oh look, look at this crop of kids they're uh they're quite <laughs> lovely um and 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 while my work generally uh 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 tracks sort of the same methodology which is i start with a data set pertaining to uh, a subject or a, or a concept uh, or, a, or a, like, as you said, a so sociological dilemma, um, and then try to distill this into uh, something emotionally palpable. Um, not always uh, do the works result in something as sort with, with I, I don't know how to say it. I, I don't, because I don't want to call my old, own work pretty, but these are very pretty. Many of them anyway are, are quite, are quite are quite pretty, uh, which is not how I'd characterize a lot of my work. Um, and 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 uh, so when I see these, uh, this sort of uh, aesthetic uh, really pops out. Um, um, and and just I'm kind of brainstorming as I'm glancing at them as 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 you're showing them, 
the the I think as a young artist, and and I know I'm not alone with this. There's sort of this. There can be a tendency towards an anti aestheticism, um, uh, which is which is a is a, is a is a I think is born out of a fear of of uh, of, of trying to win over an audience with something as simplistic as. Uh, as, as as beautiful color or composition, and and so I think a lot of young young artists uh, uh, work against that, uh, as if that were too easy or too cheap, and they go out of their way to make something that uh, uh, with some sort of uh, dissonance or uh, uh, rejection uh, of form yeah, or disturbing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And 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 so when I look at these and how. You know, utterly like, like everybody loves a circle. <laughs> like, you know, I just, on, 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 it's like it's like you're it's like you're handing out candies. You know, and I'm looking at it, but I but I also feel I feel that at 52 years old, um, you know, I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with looking at these, uh, you know, these 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 candies uh, because I know, you know, I know what's behind them. Uh, yeah, it's not just there, there's more than than the surface. No, absolutely. I think there's, I'm assuming as an artist, you probably have to be wary about aestheticism just for aestheticism's sake, unless that's the exploration that you're going for. But with sun signals, there is a deep level of um, data and technology and data capture that kind of goes into each one of these artworks that makes it seem like it's almost the, the, the beautiful layer of circles on top of it hides like the rest of the iceberg. So I guess that's an yeah. interesting question that I'd love to ask is like when you were coming up with the presentation, the digital presentation of this data was um, was aesthetics something that you were very closely focusing on or did it follow the data almost yeah. naturally and, and come from there? Yeah. Let, so, so let me let me let me explore that in sort of real time with you, because because I don't <laughs> uh, I mean, there are things I think about at great length and then there are things that. Uh, you know, I learn more about myself as an artist and my work usually through listening to other people or in having discussions like this. But I mean, what I can tell you is that I'm not a fan of of simple data visualizations. Mm -hmm. um, so because like I, I feel I, I, I what I what I don't like is where when 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 you try to when you when you have some data and you're just trying to ex and and it's just being expressed for the sake of aesthetic we, because you can sort of run it through any sort of translation i hate to use the word algorithm but like any you can you can always you can always run it through some sort of translation language that yields whatever you want it to be right sure you know if if i wanted this you know I, so you know i could map i could map data and and massage things in a way that i could I could just I could make I could turn it into any visual that I wanted to. These could all be human faces that correspond to data. You know, these could be synthetic faces, I suppose. But I don't. That's a game that I don't want to play, and it's not interesting to me conceptually. Now, obviously, obviously, one has to set some parameters, um, and that's where I, I guess it gets interesting. Uh, so, what 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 parameters are hard baked in? And which ones aren't, and what am I going to allow to transpire in the process of um, I'll get into that later? But myself coming under the influence of the technology itself, uh, namely uh, deep learning algorithms, um, and 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 in this sort of back and forth feedback loop, what what kind of comes out of that? And and reveals itself to me to be uh, a, a, an element in the in the subsequent work. So okay, I knew they were going to be. Um, well, first off, I didn't know they were going to be two dimensional. In fact, they they sort of weren't. They were three. They 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 started off as three dimensional objects. Mm. Um, at some point in my in my creative process, I then. I, I didn't. I knew I didn't want them to be three dimensional. I wanted them to. So I just. I, I sort of flattened. I flattened them at some point. What was, the, too, what, was but... the, what was the decision in knowing that you didn't want them to be three-dimensional? Um, <sighs> Not to ask question. all the hard I, questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I, 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 there was a part of me that saw them as, 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 
two dimensional objects in you know printed objects um you had a red one at the end there th th that that's probably th th the far somewhere down t t towards the right there there was a white background with a with a, what looks like a solid red sun um yeah towards the end of the row yeah. yeah 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 so like that is oh that's just like <laughs> there are just a handful of them that i really respond to and that one to me is very special because um it it uh well it, it doesn't it, it, i think that's the one or the one of them anyway that doesn't look computer generated to me that to me that looks like like i spent an awful long time with a with a with a very fine fine um like a needle scraping away at something until yeah. i had this wonderful two-dimensional surface there's something about the i can feel the surface and i didn't want it to be an object i, I just I, I don't know i i guess that's i guess i suppose that's just an aesthetic choice but i so i knew that they were going to be i knew they were going to be sun-like yeah i wanted them to be sun-like in shape i wanted there to be some sort of homogeneity uh, uh, across the project but allowing for great sort of very you know a lot of a lot of variation um and and also for those who you know follow my work i'm not big into the sort of click a button uh generate you know a thousand objects uh sort of uh generative art um uh, i'm much more interested it's 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 uh uh it's imperative that i work very closely you know with with computer with machine um to create each of these. And so, you know, so these, so I have, I have worked on each of these. I have spent time with each of these and that's why I, and, and that's sort of important to me also because I, I have a, um, I have a relationship with each of these. Sure. Some, some I've probably spent longer time or more time thinking about than others or, 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 you know, became short of breath or my body temperature increased, uh, uh, you know, to a greater extent for some reason, which is something that happens when I'm in this sort of like Sufi like state, uh, which is, which is, you know, it's never been documented. And, and quite frankly, I don't think it ever will be like, I just cause that's, it's really a, it's, it's probably doesn't, it's probably not a very pretty thing. It's a, um, I can imagine, uh, I look kind of silly as I'm, I'm, I'm in this, in this particular state. Um, but, but okay. So, so I, I, the data that I start with, has to do with uh, uh, solar radiation. Um, it has to do with increase uh, or decrease uh, in temperature uh, in, uh, in in various localities uh, around around the world. Um, uh, but also has to do with uh, um, uh, incidence uh, rate of incidence of of skin cancer. Uh, pretty much anything it has to do with. Uh, with the uh, with the sun and its impact on on Earth, it has to do. I have data uh, pertaining to um, uh, uh, agricultural crops and mm. uh, whether they're successful or, or not successful uh, in a given year. Um, now, so so here here's the part that that I think gets lost a lot, and I, I, why I'm 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 happy to talk today about this work is. Um, Forget that I have a bit of a scientific background and 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 uh, and that I use uh, you know as a lot of people do, but you know very sophisticated tools. I think there's nothing scientific at all about my, my approach. I don't mm -hmm. adhere to a scientific method. There's nothing particularly repeatable about my process. Um, mm -hmm. Remember, I'm trying to take uh, I'm trying to take uh, something. Um, you know, quite tangible and 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 easy to intellectualize, and turn into something uh, that has a that has uh, I keep saying the term, but emotional value, and 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 that and and so in doing so, my process is very is is ritualistic. I go through the ritual of working with these sophisticated machines. I go back and forth, like I said, in this in this loop. Uh, until I decide when the work is done. It's very personal. Um, just to kind of dig down into the, the, the morphology uh, of, of these pieces. Um, so, so there are, there are rules that are, that are set at from time to time. Uh, 
look, anybody who we 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 throw we throw around the term AI very very uh, easily these days, um, and and I I refer to the kind of the chain of tools I use as a battery of machine learning algor algorithms. Remember, at the end of the day, that an if this then that statement is 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 an algorithm. So. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes it's as simple as that. It's just it's just rule based logic, but then at then there's another component that's unsupervised learning using deep learning algorithms, which is a little bit you know fancier, a little bit more abstract. Um, and I talk, about, I, I talk about using these tools um, to surface truths and insights, but I would not say that there is much con concrete coming out of that concrete from an intellectual standpoint on the one hand i would love to use the tools that i feel rather adept at using and my own um my own uh you know i'd love to flex my mind a bit and impress people you know intellectually but i believe it is my sort of purpose um uh, uh, in 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 this in this existence on Earth, to 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 uh, subvert any inclination that I would have uh, to do that, and 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 ply people emotionally, because at the end of the day, this is a piece of activism. Most of my work is uh, uh, a form of art as activism, and uh, it's about uh, uh, hopefully causing people to uh, become more concerned than hopefully they already are about various issues. Uh, in this uh, case, it would be uh, it would be climate change uh, mm -hmm. and energy consumption. And I don't I could make all sorts of uh, intellectual arguments as we all can and show data that's rather compelling. But probably that's not going to move anyone beyond uh, of the position, a position that they're already quite fortified in, but mm -hmm. using emotional tools and allowing people to come to conclusions uh, on their own based on experiencing something and uh, allowing themselves to uh, be impacted and have a personal dialogue with something. See, I, I it's not important to me that an audience um, understands why they're being moved you know and i and i quite frankly don't have the words to explain uh why they might be moved but if they are moved i'm successful mm -hmm. and it's hard to quantify and as you can see as we as we explore this more i think you can see there's 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 very little that's scientific about this yeah, I think you. I think that's a very interesting point as well. Sorry, Kara, if you wanted to jump in. No, well, um, I was just um, going to follow on the emotional value and how, like, it uh, it's very often a catalyst, a catalyst for action um, rather than other, maybe more logical uh, ways to try to um, have people engage with with an issue. Um, and on the on the uh, subject of value, actually, uh, since it's um, one of uh, the elements that uh, feeds into your work, uh, not just in this one, but like in general, um, the idea of value, its relationship with the concept of price, uh, the difference between the two. Um, well, it is key to a lot of your works. Um, and, I was wondering if you want to tell us more about it. Uh, why is is it so such a re about relevant about element? About uh, value, the idea of value, and how you play about um, sure in your work. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't be an artist if I didn't have, um, if I didn't have something that uh, I thought. Well, it, that that entertained me to no end. Basically, it's about. I at the end of the day, it's it's. I think it's about. Well, there's a couple of things. There's there's sort of this internal obligation to create, and then, and then at the same time, there's this fascination with um, 
with the perversity of our of our value systems and how mm -hmm. illogical uh, they can be. Um, so, you know, it, it could come down to someone being, you know, especially frugal in one aspect of their life, uh, and then uh, and and then the opposite on uh, somewhere else where they just spend money, you know, w without thinking recklessly, um, or it could be uh, someone who, you know, won't won't uh, support a given shop uh, because of some, you know, po po you know, pol for for po some political reason, and yet they'll they kind of throw that out the window and 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 support another product that is uh uh is even more culpable in some way just mm -hmm. this illogical illogical uh um the the kind of the 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 perversity is, is too about i i used to say that when when we're coming to this world um you know the, the moment that we come into this world people try to ascribe value to us Mm -hmm. And they they might say that this this child is so full of potential and this one's worthless, um, this one's worth investing in, this one's not. Sometimes mm -hmm. it unfortunately comes down to gender, and uh, in, in, uh, frequently. Um, and and then and then of course like with with some of my early crypto work that had no physical uh, or visual uh, manifestation. I, 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 I chose to challenge the notion that uh, that physical goods enjoyed a a um, a, a, a position uh, of, of of superiority in some you know man-made hierarchy above um, above immaterial things, and people would say you know well how can that have any value at all I can't hold it in my hand, and I would say well you know can't hold love in your hand either and, and that has value and so so i and 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 but but almost daily well daily i don't know daily but weekly certainly someone will just say something it'll it'll be a new take on the illogical way we value things and so that just never gets old and 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 identity and there's this relationship between identity and value i suppose that i that i that i play with um and, and that has to do also with uh separation separation of an individual from the collective uh separation from uh a viewer to the to a piece of work that they're viewing um mm -hmm. when I, I i do this exercise sometimes with with people about holding up a potato, an actual potato in, in their hand and, and to look at it and try to see yourself in it. And some people find that very difficult. And then for others, it, it literally becomes a mirror. Um, and also, you know, to to somehow bring yourself to the, the place where you can look at an object like a like a dirty potato or a clean potato, but anyway, a potato nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And and. and and ask yourself, you know, am I any greater than this object? And mm -hmm. these type of these type of questions, I think, are valuable. Whatever the answer is, you come to. I think these kind of questions are important. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's a really interesting point as well. This idea of value being so intangible and transient, especially when it occupies different roles or um, touches different people in life. And I think that for me, one of the, a great example of that is the sun, like in sun signals, right? It's, uh, it's a giant celestial body that most of us, I think I could very easily say all of us will never be able to touch physically, will never be able to get within its orbit. The closest thing we can get to it are these extensions of its heat, perhaps, and maybe its light. Um, but even then, it changes so intangibly throughout the year. If you live on one side of the Earth, on the top side, it could be very cold. If you live on the bottom side, it could be very warm. Um, it could influence the types of crops that grow. So you've grown up on different types of biological you know, experiences because of this one organism. And yet it is pretty, you know, it's pretty, it constantly changes, but it is also very constant. 
in it in itself. And, and 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 as we know it, it's millions of years old. So we're yeah. being, you know, the the suntan one gets, or the sunburn, or the you know, that's that's uh, from rays that took an awful long time to get here. It's true. We should be honored whenever we get a sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, as I'm looking at them here, it's, it's, I, I'd like to know something about your choice of these. There, how many sun signals are there? There are a lot. There, are a thousand. There's twelve. 10, right? 12 yeah. Uh, well, yes, total. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that that's quite that's quite a job because I didn't I I didn't pick these right. You picked them, no? Yeah. We did. We you gave us so to, we we initially spoke with you and you gave us kind of some parameters and some potential suggestions, but then we went through okay. and selected as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so um, yeah. I'm I'm curious because that I, I that, like I just saw a couple that I thought were ugly, but but that's beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't All art is beautiful. Their... No, no, no. But, but like, so, so tell, tell me what, what your, what choices you, 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 you made, made in, in choosing these. Well, uh, first of all, we wanted to include at least a Western sun and an Eastern sun in right, the way right. you also described them. Um, and in right, fact, the, like. In the, in, the last know, one that we talked know. about, yeah, the, the very last one uh, that we talked about earlier, uh, which is like with whitish background and white and red, would be uh, an Asian sun. Um, whereas the yellow, uh, well, even the one that we're looking at, or like um, a couple of suns to, yeah, well, we, we just passed it. There is a very almost Klimt like uh, yellow one, um, the fourth from the from the start. Uh, that would be like that was our choice for uh, a Western sun. Um, because like we, we thought about uh, how cultural representation of the sun around the world changes and uh, chromatically how it's uh, represented in different parts of the world. Like we had this discussion with you and we wanted to include that. But then um, again, it's um, it also um, came as a, a choice of what, like, of course you can't, um, I don't know, within 12 elements, which was the number that we chose to have, you, you can't really comprise uh, a thousand artworks. But we wanted to uh, at least give a chance um, to the public to see the variety a bit. So we mm -hmm. tried to get like um, a variety also of sizes or, or hues and um, we were interested and actually intrigued by this black sands that there were in the um, in the whole series. So we we included one. Um, oh, do you have one there? Can I see, can I see which one? Which yeah. one is that? The 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 one right next to like the third one from the from the beginning. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, like, even if we look at the second one, uh, the one to to the left. I mean, this one um, personally reminds me of uh, Andy Warhol's Setting Suns. I mean, there are so <laughs> many elements that um, to each of them that can actually um, almost um, be, um, I don't know, um, traced back to uh, a different art form totally. or yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. a moment Absolutely. in art I history. That. I tweeted I, for a while. I was tweeting like uh, you know th there was one that looked like uh, um, from a Michelangelo. There was another one that looked <laughs> from an old ukiyo-e Japanese drawing. Like you, c I found so many that that really looked like I pulled them right off uh, the artwork. And and uh, and you're right about the Warhol and uh, yeah yeah. Uh, there there were some there there. There were some definite uh, uh, connections to culture as well. Um, I knew that going as, in as well. Just the people's, I, I did want to have some sort of flavor of um, uh, historically and also culturally uh, people's relationship with, uh, with the sun. Uh, but yeah, so for those who don't know, in, in like Japan and China, a young child will uh, most certainly uh, draw a sun as red. And in Europe or uh, United States, uh, it'll be more kind of a yellowish orange. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
or just yellow? Yes, well, yeah. we, we were actually uh, also interested in knowing if there was, well, you already talked about the last one, but like if you felt anything, since it's like a very emotionally charged work, if you felt anything particular for another work that we selected. Um, were, were you baiting me with uh, with Matt's gazers over there? Is, are you talking about these <laughs> ones, or are you talking about another? No, 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 no. Your your <laughs> own uh, <Okay>. sun signals. <laughs> okay, because I do <laughs> like gazers as well. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, like some. If you go uh, move to the left a little bit there, um, the the one that's very like kind of broken and uh, in the center. Uh, there are two, I think. That pink one, the pink one. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, so there are a handful of those, and I don't actually, like, there's a part of me that almost doesn't want to talk about why certain things happen, because uh, I don't want to sort of corrupt the, the audience's um, uh, experience in, in with the work, but I will say that that those were that this particular group were interesting. Um, mm -hmm. There was a... Uh, uh, it's sort of a corruption of data that occurred, uh, but I left it in and uh, be, <laughs> I don't know why, it just felt right to leave leave this. Uh, a lot of my work actually deals with sub subversion of technology and there is a corruption that occurred that I allowed to persist and that just happens to be um, one of them. Um, uh, and, and I think that speaks to uh, the fallibility of, uh, of, of, uh, of data to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. Also, if you go to that first one, uh, just to give a little bit of the kind of visual language. So, so in certain, certain works, uh, certain works uh, have, a have a lot to do with the position of the sun. That one, that first one definitely does. So when you see, when you see the, the main sort of uh, circle or spherical element, in the middle and then there's context like that that's because that one was more about um it was more about uh, the position of the sun and and gaining an understanding of its relationship to the cosmos uh mm -hmm. as it more so than it is to to its direct relationship with earth yeah. so, and so so there is so there are some where the sun is like a like a dot uh, I, I know uh, Benoit uh, Kuti, uh, his collection, they, they have one like that. There are only two or three. Um, they're just a sort of a, a, a matrix of the cosmos. And then the, the sun is just almost like just a little bright dot in the distance. Then you get a real kind of con contextual, you know, real kind of a zoomed out view of, uh, of the sun. Um, and, and, uh, um, and then I noticed something else I saw there that I wanted to pay, pay a, a note was, um, mm, mm, I don't know, lost, lost me, but, uh, uh, yeah, you know, when you, when, when you were talking about showing these, you know, I, I, we, we talked about possibly presenting them in, in a 3d format, but I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, undo the work that had been done. I like I didn't I did the, some of the early ones that were still in they, I, I guess they all were sort of 3D at some point before I just mm -hmm. flattened them all yeah yeah so that's just a it's just an existence that they'll they'll never uh, they'll never uh, appreciate yeah well but also no, you go it. ahead go go right no um, I was going to say that. Um, in within these works, um, and you mentioned it uh, a lot, technology is very present as well as in general in your practice. Um, and so, like we were, I was wondering if you could maybe retrace your relationship with technology um, and tell us how it evolved uh, throughout your career. You already mentioned how like uh, you work ritualistically with it. Um, but yeah, we were wondering if you wanted I, to tell us more about that. I was, I was, um, I was of the generation. The I think, I think, yeah, the, definitely the first generation with PCs. So, uh, you know, uh, middle class white kid in America uh, with European parents. I was living between the United States and and Ireland and, and Germany and 
stuff. Um, but essentially, and I and I bring that up for a reason. I I, I bring I don't I've never brought that, but I bring it up for a reason because I, I it it you look at you look at the Zuckerbergs and you look at so many of the early um, uh, you know tech uh, founders uh, and uh, you know successful tech founders um and then you and you and you look at it and, you, and you, they were all white and uh and and it, and i think it, it has to do with this kind of socioeconomic reality of uh these affluent kids who had computers in the house now it's a completely different uh, <laughs> you know te technology has been democratized to a great sense a great extent since then but if you look at like mid 1980s like 1984 85 you know uh, computers were expensive, and, and well, in fairness, we—I didn't even have one. <laughs> like I, I came to the table pretty late. I only—I actually had access to computers through my friends who had uh, more affluent friends. Um, and uh, but I mean, I—I I feel like I mean, even in the schools um, in Los Angeles where I grew up, it was uh, you know only certain schools had computers. But we were we didn't rely on schools for computers. We you either knew somebody who had one or they didn't, and and you uh, you know in kids we were we were hacking away back then. You know we we <laughs> were we were with those little dial-up modems breaking into you know companies you know and 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 hacking databases already way way back then and and mm -hmm. and and but not in a not in a malicious way you know just in a sort of a inquisitive way and. Mm -hmm. And 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 there's 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 a lot here actually that I, I you know to expand on, but I guess we'll focus on what, what your question was. And that is that, unlike so some people, uh, I I don't I wouldn't have characterized myself as a computer nerd, but I was always working with computers. I had friends who definitely were computer nerds, and then I had friends who just for whatever reason didn't have interest in computers. They played video games, etc., but not like not like learning how to code. And so, for whatever reason, I um, it was always a part of uh, it was always a part of my life. Uh, was 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 every time and you know new 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 uh, processor came out and or new uh, uh, language or you know uh, I I was just all I was always interested in, but in but not just out of curiosity, but as a tool. What could I do with it? uh and i think and, and i and i i I'm, I'm thinking that that that's it's just that i i don't i i wonder if i i could i i could do what i do today if i if i ha if i hadn't had this con continuum from let's say the mid 80s through today like well, i mean i guess i did i had a couple of years where i went a little off the rails with different things and i wasn't very I wasn't I wasn't doing a lot with computers then, but so but that was only a sh short hiatus. Um, I suppose it must be. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 no. Go on. What? Um, I suppose it must be really interesting in this um, unique, like lived experience as computers are growing less and less unfamiliar. You're also getting less and less unfamiliar with them, like almost growing up together. And I think. Uh, early on, probably in like the early 90s, this was something that like computers were not simple, obviously, they're very de like delicate and temperamental machines. But um, a lot of people I know who grew up to be software developers have the same story of like when they were a kid, they had a computer and they played around with it and they figured out the ways to break it. And then they figured out the ways to fix it afterwards. And then you just you kind of create this cycle of this machine that gets more and more complicated as, as you're growing up. But like yeah. the machine you yeah. lived with, you know, you you were almost born together in the same way. So that's true. And I and I was always a PC person as opposed to an Apple person. So yeah, yeah. You know, and building and building my own computers, like so many people do. Um, and and yeah, and just it was always it wasn't about just letting this machine do do stuff for you. It was it was about having a deeper understanding of how the machine works in the first mm -hmm. place. Um, but also using it as a tool. Uh, you know, what can I do with this? How, how can this, how can this help me achieve my goals? How can it make me money? How can it make, you know, make, uh, uh, augment my practice as an artist? And when, and then, 
uh, with photography, it was natural, right? Because uh, I mean, I, I was a photographer back when retouching was, you know, only done the old fashioned way with airbrushing and, and chemicals on paper. And, and, uh, and then, you know, with the advent of Photoshop, it just was like, wow, it's, you know, scanning images into the computer. And, and I think that's probably so like circa 1990, circa 1990, 1990, 1991, 92, certainly that, 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 that range of years is when I really started playing with generative photography and tweaking. So of course we were shooting film back then, but scanning into the computer and playing with the scanners and, uh, and uh, playing with uh, image acquisition. Uh, I was uh, that that uh, I was playing with uh, you know uh, yeah non lens based image acquisition like you would mm. with a with a scan with a scanner flatbed scanner um, and and then that just carried on and carried on then when digital photography came in uh, which was great for me because it happened to coincide with a period of me being basically homeless and having lost everything and uh, I couldn't even afford to to work in photography for this period of time. And so, so in a way, digital photography kind of really saved my life. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and, and I, I, I was speaking earlier with someone about it, uh, for, for those who collected my work, my photographic work uh, going back, you know, for forever, uh, I think when they saw my, 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 you know, generative art, crypto art, uh, it could, other conceptual digital work explode in like 2018, 2019. Um, I had a lot of sort of explaining to do to these older collectors of mine, people who felt that they really understood me as an artist. Um, they didn't understand at all how that could be connected to say something like mm -hmm. sun signals. Um, and, and in fact, for, for me, it's, it's the same thing. Remember, I start with I start with a subject. I start with a data set. I, I I I squeeze some emotional value out of it. But that's what I do. Even if I take somebody's photo of, of some of a face, if I take a photograph of a potato, if I take a photograph of a dead uh, vase of flowers, um, you you uh, it's 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 I'm a one trick pony. It's uh, it's, uh, it's sort of the same thing. Yeah, on the surface they may seem wildly different, but uh, it's 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 kind of the same work. Right. Well, you, you referenced your 2016, if I'm not mistaken, work, uh, the potato, um, the the picture of uh, of the potato, and I remember it being actually very tied to the idea of value that we talked about um, earlier as well. Um, well, well, the, the, it became it became a discussion around value. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it had to do with. Um, I talk, like I With the price and yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it was about a potato, a portrait of a potato, this this thing that doesn't have a lot of value and taken for granted. And, and now here you are confronting it on a wall and it's on your level. And uh, and it was a proxy for the shared human experience. And But yes, then it sold for a lot of money many years later. And then, and then it really was a, it became this discussion around value. And I think it's hilarious because people don't blink these days when a JPEG sells for, you know, one and a half million dollars or five million dollars or more. But back then, and that wasn't that long ago, you know, a few years ago, it, we sold for a little over a million and people, I, people just lost it. You know, they went crazy. And I, I actually don't think it's even the, 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 the dollar value or, you know, or the fact that it's a relatively recent work. It's not like, you know, a hundred years old. I think it's because um, it's a potato. You know, I, I think if it were an avocado, it, it wouldn't be so bad. Uh, but when, 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 you know, my phone started ringing a few years ago when Maurizio Catalan threw his banana up on the wall with the uh -huh. tape. And, and yeah. I don't remember what it's I don't remember what it sold for maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars and mm -hmm. and again the uproar it's like and the, it, it, it swept across the globe and he's a better known artist than I am and it was at it was at an art fair and but everybody wanted to know from the potato guy what did I thought about that and I tell you what I thought I thought because there was a lot of speculation was that a publicity stunt was that was you know is it satire what is it and I said it doesn't matter whether it's satire not satire publicity not I said the fact is. If it costs 200 grand to get everybody in the world talking about value and looking at yep. their own value systems, that's cheap. That's cheap. I wish we could do that every day. <laughs> yeah, so that was, absolutely. That was, um, 
you know, any, so anything that I always say that my metric for success is how, how quickly can someone engage with my work, whatever that work mm -hmm. should be, and it move to a meaningful conversation about value or identity. If the quicker it is, then the better I've done my work. I don't need them to sit there for seven hours, you know, trying to figure out the meaning of life by looking into, you know, my work. They do, they do. <laughs> but but I, I'm more interested in the dinner conversation that ensues afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. And I think your your discussion as well of other works that you've done, poking at different um, concepts is, is something that's really interesting to us as well, because we, this work, Sun Signals, um, has 10, 1,010 um, individual artworks in it. And uh, a previous work you've done is the one, uh, 1111 series as well. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it would be really interesting to kind of get your take on, um, yeah, how you've how you've been produ producing like these individual works and, you know, how it fits in with your mm. earlier production in the, the very focused potato and the discussions that's surrounding that as well. Yes. Well, so I was not a particularly prolific artist. Um, I had, I, I, I don't know how many, but let's say up until... Well, up until 2021, you know, when I did when when 1111 came out, um, I think up until that point, I, maybe a hundred collectors worldwide of my work. Maybe I, I mean I really have no idea of knowing, but something like that, which is it's a lot. Um, when when I when I used to think that was a lot, but then overnight suddenly I added a few hundred more, and then with a couple more projects. So you know, so now I don't know how many it is. Let's call it a thousand or fifteen hundred, probably people. Who 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 have my have my work, um, but so that was an interesting decision. I, and I, I you know it's funny we're talking about March 2021, which now seems like ancient history in in uh, in uh, you know in in this uh, in this world we live in now. Uh, but this was before Bored Apes. It was post CryptoPunks, obviously. CryptoPunks was much earlier, um, but it was the first project I think by an artist. That, and I'm not, I'm not, this isn't a firstism sort of thing. I'm not like, it's not, not no bragging thing, but, but there was this consideration about putting out 1111 unique works, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, this is also, this is also before the explosion of, of the kind of click and generate a thousand work sort of thing, you know, art blocks or FX hash or something like that. It was before all of that, yeah. um, they had, had kind of blown up. So I, I was this artist who wanted to do a project and I had to decide, like, does this even make sense? Like when 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 has an artist put out, uh, you know, a thousand unique works? Because it's same thing with 1111, even though so many of them kind of look similar and, and you could imagine that they were just generated very easily. They, they were not. I spent a considerable amount of time on that project. In fact, I'll never do another project like that again. It practically <laughs> killed me. Um, it just li literally, li just almost, yeah. <laughs> it, did, it probably didn't have to, but it, but it did. Um, and uh, uh, and and so that was sort of, and I only kind of, I, I never, it never occurred to me. It was recently that some artists had told me that when I saw you do the thing with eleven eleven, I thought, well, wow, I I could do a big series like that too, because the big numbered things were sort of the domain of the PFP projects. Mm. There were, you know, so. Um, so that uh, anyway, it was a very, it, it, it just, I, I think I, I was very fortunate that, um, you know, I don't like to talk much about like art markety stuff, but from an art market perspective, things were really in full swing in March, 2021. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they all found collectors very quickly. And, uh, and that was, uh, that was, that was, that was a good, that was a good, good feeling. Um, and then sun signals, uh, if I'm not mistaken, didn't I give them away? Yeah, I think Sun Signals was like a gift for my, for my. Um, I th am I am I right about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sun Signals was a gift I gave to my eleven eleven collectors. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, we were we were wondering if you wanted to tell us more um, about the relationship between the two projects and also the satellite, then eleven eleven <laughs> oh, my cosmos. Poor, my poor satellite. My poor satellite. Okay. So in short. 
in short, I've been working on a project called 1111 Cosmos, which is a nanosat, a small satellite uh, that uh, will uh, will fly, will be be launched into into low orbit and fly what's called a sun synchronous orbit. It, it has solar panels and and uh, has enough battery power to sort of sustain itself. But uh, if it were to go out of what the sun synchronous orbit, it would uh, it would uh, its batteries would die and I would lose. Uh, you lose control of the satellite. Um, it, it's uh, so it's something I've been working on a long time. Not it's I, I wanted to say it's not rocket science, but it sort of is rocket science. But it's 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 surprisingly, I mean, in the on the list of things I never imagined doing in my life, and then well, so far I haven't. But uh, is is launching a satellite. Um, but it's it's basically it's like a little computer it's a little mini computer you're running you're running software that's very familiar uh it's uh it's got a communications module so you can uh, interact with it uh at, at certain times you have to you have to book slots which you can uh, you can um you can interact with it but the idea was that uh i'll have i'll have uh, 1111 cosmos uh, up in orbit and I'll be using. I, I, I have two cameras uh, that are built into the satellite. One's a, a, nor, a conventional camera, and one is a uh, an infrared camera. And we'll be collecting. Um, we'll be collecting uh, uh, data pertaining to uh, carbon emissions uh, across uh, the globe, where as as much as we can capture. And I and I'll make that available to uh, to um, to researchers, uh, if anybody's wondering, like. Is this guy, you know, snorting glue or something? Because what can he do on his little nano set that NASA can't do with their giant, um, with their giant cameras on their giant satellites? Well, I'll tell you, actually. I uh, well, first off, that data is is made very expensive to researchers. Mine will be given away. But aside from that, um, I'm a big, big believer in something I've been preaching for many, many years, which has has come to fruition. It's in small data. It's in it's in pruning extraneous data. I believe that there are, and this is sort of an art, this is not scientists speaking really, it's more kind of art, artist thinking, but it turns out that, uh, it turns out that uh, having the most data and the most fidelity is not always the path to the greatest uh, truths and, uh, and insights. In fact, sometimes by having a fuzzier view of things, and by having less data, you actually can gain greater insights into the the subject you're studying. And so that's my 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 thesis with this is that I will have lower res um, data, but because I'm not looking for granular data, I'm looking for much more sort of uh, you know zoomed out uh, data with respect to uh, heat mapping. Um, it, it's fine. And then it becomes a then it becomes a game of uh, you know whose uh, whose math is better than the next person's math, and uh, well, I've got some pretty cool people on my team to help me with that. But then the idea was that I I airdrop some art to my 1111 holders, uh, or space drop, I should say, um, you know, directly from the satellite, which is just cool, which I which 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 I can only justify by if I have the other side, which is uh, you know providing some valuable data to some people who are who are doing some valuable work around. Uh, around uh, the climate uh, uh, crisis. Um, do you hear that loud noise, by the way? Uh, yeah, I think anybody? there's a bit of a... Yes, okay. it might be. OK. Yeah. So so um, the, uh, the, here's the here's the short of it. Uh, I was scheduled uh, before COVID to do a launch from India. COVID screwed all that up. And it hasn't gotten any better since then. Um, because I had to first... Uh, uh, I, I had a second potential win. It's all about getting a launch window. Uh, and India uh, was very gracious. Uh, Russia is not an option anymore. And the yeah. United States uh, is just a lot of red tape and, and a little bit more time consuming uh, when you don't have the sort of the, 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 the backing of NASA or, or, a, or you know, Jet Propulsion Lab or something like that. So, uh, so I am uh, going to India in the next couple months and hopefully we'll be able to... Uh, uh, set something up in the in the near future. It's not some. It's definitely not abandoned. There's too much money into this satellite, and uh, and too much uh, of myself and time and 
and uh, and hopes invested in this. So it's it's going up. I, I do have some options actually in the United States. It might not take as long. I just have to weigh. I, I'm I'm optimizing for quicker and uh, and uh, and politically friendly uh, uh, host. We wish you all the luck in the world. It sounds it does sound Thanks. like it's a lot of red tape, regardless of which way you go. But I can't imagine launching a satellite is a particularly easy process. But yeah, definitely hoping this one yeah. comes through. Um, I think we are nearing towards the end of our time now. So we just wanted to ask if there was anything else that you wanted to add, anything you wanted to explain, or any projects in the future that you're working towards, just as a, a quick summary of everything that we've done. I don't know. I'm showing a series of uh, what I call anti-fascist paintings at Art Basel Miami this week with Novel oh, Draxler yeah. Gallery. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? I... Yeah, just always working on stuff. Things are popping up, as you know. As you know, there, there, there are you know crypto art shows popping up in every corner of the world, and I'm I'm kind of fortunate or unfortunate that with every one of them, when they try to do a sort of history of uh, thing, you know, some usually at some point they stumble across uh, they stumble across my my name, and uh, and uh, I, I I usually I usually uh, you know support these these initiatives. Um, but yeah, and but I'll be spending the next few months in Asia uh, on a project. And uh, uh, who's that? Who's that in the in the who's that clapping? In the, uh... <laughs> he's been he's been helping us navigate the space. So he's providing some. Oh, <laughs> providing some I, like, I like it. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's a there's a I wonder if I have it on my maybe I'll post it on my Instagram in the in the um, there is something very similar to Sun Signals uh, that's in, on display kind of permanently now at the uh, uh, Israel Museum in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. um, and right. it's, uh, it's called Sun Over Jerusalem. And it's sort of the same methodology I used for this, but I used it for uh, solar data in Jerusalem specifically. And it's, uh, it's, a, an, animated, uh, it's an animated piece. So it's, um, I, I mean, if you imagine all these sun signals, like all like kind of running as a GIF. <laughs> it's sort of like that, sort of like that. Fantastic. Um, and it's definitely not the sort of thing you want to do if you're triggered, like could have seizures from flashing images. You definitely <laughs> want to stay away from it. In fact, I'm surprised it's even in a public space that they allow it in a public <laughs> space. But it's, uh, Great, so if you want to see that, head over to Kevin's Instagram and find him on social media. Oh, so I'll have to, now I'll have to find you. it. <laughs> But yeah, this has been an absolutely lovely talk. Thank you so much for joining us. We've had I've had such a great time diving deeply into thank your you. practice and sun signals and all of this. So thank you for yeah. uh, thank you for having me. You can of you course. can edit out all the bits where I I just sit there with my mouth open wondering what I should uh, say next. <laughs> It'll be very short. Any, any anywhere where I just talk too much, just snip snip away. Not at all. It was all very interesting <laughs> things to say. So I mean, it was our our pleasure, really. Um, and thank you, yeah, thank you for, for participating. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and I think that concludes the final artist talk for not only RGB, and it's been, thank you to Kevin, thank you to all the artists who've joined us on this journey, and yes, please do go see the exhibition in uh, Decentraland space, it's on until the end of January, and yeah, thank you. Hope to see you guys in the metaverse soon. Yeah, in January, we will be screening um, a film uh, by Sarah Mayores. Um, mm. And that's uh, certainly an event you you will not want to miss. And uh, besides that, yes, enjoy, enjoy the exhibition, enjoy these uh, great artworks. And uh, uh, Kevin, thank you again for your time, uh, for letting us know more about Sun Signals and your practice.